Hey, what's up guys? Q&A and today's question is off of Facebook and it's by Johnny C. Maybe it's Johnny Cash, I don't know. We'll see, but it's Johnny C. Anyway, um, how do I set up an active crossover versus a passive? Well, I'm gonna put this down and we're gonna talk about that a little bit. So, basically, here is your passive networks. These networks come with pretty much all of your components that are out there on the market unless you buy them a la carte, uh, where you buy the tweeter separate and the mid separate. So, right now, on these passive networks, you've got your input and then you've got your output to your tweeter and your output to your mid bass driver. Internally in this crossover here, this passive network, this is set by the manufacturer so it crosses over the tweeter properly and the mid bass properly for the best performance in most cases with most manufacturers. So what a lot of people want to do is they actually want to get rid of these passive networks and they want to go active. And what that basically will wind up doing is that you'll need instead of a two channel application here where you'd have just a two channel run just all four of these speakers here, uh, you know, obviously two and two, um, you would actually now need a four channel amplifier. Now two of the channels of that four channel would run the tweeters, two of those channels, the other two channels would run the mid bass drivers. Now it's known in the industry that a crossover that's not designed properly can eat up to 40 to 50 percent of the amplifier's current going through all the caps and coils and stuff like that in a crossover network. So going active you actually get more power to your actual speakers. But that comes at a price typically because you actually need an amplifier that can support that but there's other ways that are better to do that as well too. Not to say just a, you know a particular amp will not work well. So here I've got an example for you. This is an amplifier that's a four channel amplifier and what you're going to basically need to know is that obviously four channels but you're going to need an amplifier that has a times 10 multiplier and that's pretty simple to explain. Basically it takes whatever the set crossover is, so here's an example, this low pass filter if I was to press the times 10 multiplier on it now instead of being 50 and 500 it's going to be 500 and 5000. So it's going to allow us to cross over the tweeter in the range that it needs to be in order to sound its best. Obviously these tweeters aren't going to take 80 hertz. They're not going to even probably take 500. Um, so um, not only that, but with a bandpass filter, you're able to set the floor and the ceiling essentially on what the speaker is going to play. So on this mid bass driver, if I only wanted it to play from 50 hertz to 2500 hertz, I can determine that with my bandpass filter by setting that. And then I can have my tweeter play from let's say 2500 hertz on up. So I'm going to need something that can control the crossover points actively where my passive networks used to do that. Now another option would be to do something like a DSP or really sophisticated EQ. There's a lot out there that are on the market. There's Audio Control which is well known for all of their products. They have some great EQs out there, some great DSPs. Uh, they've got uh, the Rockford 360 which has been around for years. Um, Audison makes the um, bit 1, the bit 10. And what's cool about those types of processors is that you can actually, for the most part, plug them into the computer or use their digital interface that they have on the actual uh, DSP itself. And you can actually sit there and very accurately, electronically, set the crossover points, high pass, low pass, band pass. You can do times, you don't even need to do times 10 at that point because you would just go to channel one and two and you would say high pass and you would just say I want them crossed over at 2500 hertz and you know that they're very very accurate because it's set digitally instead of through some analog dials. Not to say that you couldn't get a scope and get precise with these dials either but nowadays you're going to see a nowadays you're seeing a lot more digital sound processors that make things so much easier. You plug it in, go on the computer, you set everything and it gives you more features to really dial in your audio system. So that's really the gist of it is passive networks are eating up power and now you got to find a home for them. You get rid of them, you go active, but you need four channels and you need an amplifier that has a times 10 multiplier uh, and a bandpass filter preferably 
And if not, you want to go beyond that and you got the pocket, the money to do it, deep pockets, then you want to go with a DSP, a digital sound processor. I named a few. On another side of things, if you invest some good money into a really good set of components that have a good passive network, that's not a bad thing too. Because if you really don't have the experience to making something sound really good using going active, sometimes I've seen guys that are like, man, I went active, I spent all this money, I'm just having a hard time getting it to sound good. Sometimes if you don't have the experience, you don't have an RTA, you don't have an oscilloscope, you don't have stuff to really dial in things right, just stay, just stay passive. Anyway, that's just kind of the, you know, the gist of it. Hopefully you learn from it sums it up really simple um and i'm alan sonic electronics q a thank you for watching thank you for the questions check us out social media youtube facebook and twitter and instagram we'll see you next time